Welcome to a second video on the hyperbola. The goals of this video are to convert an equation of a hyperbola in general form to standard form and then also to graph the hyperbola. Let's go and do a quick review from the last video. If we have the equation of hyperbola in standard form and the x part of the equation is the positive part, the hyperbola will have a horizontal transverse axis. If the y part of the equation is the positive part, then the transverse axis will be vertical as we see here on the right. Next, the center of the hyperbola in both cases will be hk. a squared will be the denominator of the positive part of the equation and b squared will be the denominator of the part that we're subtracting or you can think of it as the negative part. Once we determine the value of a and b, we can determine the value of c by using the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So once we determine what type of transverse axis the hyperbola has, and then the center, and then a, b, and c, we can make a nice graph of the hyperbola. And here's how we do it. We first start by plotting the center in both cases. Next, if it has a horizontal transverse axis, we'll add and subtract a to the x-coordinate of the center to determine the two vertices of the hyperbola, or these two points on the hyperbola. If it has a vertical transverse axis, we'll add and subtract a to the y-coordinate of the center, as we see here and here. The next thing we're going to do is construct this rectangle that is centered between the two pieces of the hyperbola. And this rectangle has dimensions 2a by 2b. So from the center, we'll go up and down b units so that we have these four points on the rectangle and then we'll form the rectangle. The reason this rectangle is so helpful is that the lines passing through the diagonals here and here are the asymptotes to the hyperbola. Therefore, these two pieces of the hyperbola will approach those two lines. Again, it's very similar when we have a vertical transverse axis, except now we'll add and subtract b from the center to get this point and this point and then form the rectangle. And again, we'll construct the asymptotes to aid us in making a nice, accurate graph. The last thing we'll do is determine the coordinates of the foci. If it has a horizontal transverse axis, we will add and subtract c to the x-coordinate of the center. And if it has a vertical transverse axis, we'll add and subtract c to the y-coordinate of the center. So let's go ahead and start with an equation in general form, write it in standard form, and then graph. Normally, in order to write an equation in standard form, we have to complete the square. However, on this equation, since we only have an x squared term and a y squared term, we don't have to do that. We can just divide by 16. So this will give us x squared over 4 minus y squared over 16 equals 1. And now this is in standard form. Now, if we really wanted to, we could rewrite this slightly so it matches this form exactly. What I mean by that is we could write this as the quantity x minus 0 squared over 4 minus y minus 0 squared over 16 equals 1. And this just reinforces that our center is going to be the origin 0, 0. Next, since the x part of the equation is the positive part, this hyperbola will have a horizontal transverse axis. So it's going to look something like this when we finish. We'll open to the right and open to the left. This is important because if we know this, we shouldn't have to memorize all these rules in order to determine the vertices and the foci. a squared is going to equal 4 because that's the denominator of the positive part of the equation. Therefore, a equals 2. b squared will equal 16, so b equals 4. Now let's go ahead and find c. Remember, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So you would have c squared equals 4 plus 16, that's 20. So c equals the square root of 20, which is equal to 2 square root of 5. Now since we use c to determine the foci, and we're going to be plotting those, let's go ahead and convert c to a decimal. I've already done that. It's approximately 4.47. Let's go ahead and take all this information over to the next screen, and then we can make a graph. OK, so we have the center and the value of a, b, and c. And we know we have a horizontal transverse axis. So we'll start by plotting the center, 0, 0. Next, we're going to add and subtract a from the x-coordinate of the center to determine the two vertices, which are two points on the hyperbola. Since a is equal to 2, this would be the point 2, 0, 
and this would be the point negative two zero and those are our vertices next we'll construct this rectangle so we can sketch in the asymptotes to help us make a nice graph notice from here we went left and right a units now we're going to go up and down b units since b is equal to four we'll go up to four and down to negative four we're going to use the two green points and the two vertices to construct this rectangle. It will look something like this. Now we'll sketch the asymptotes, which will pass through the diagonals of the rectangle. So from here, we can actually make a nice graph of the hyperbola. It'll start here at this vertex and approach these two asymptotes. So it will look something like this. And then on the left, it will look something like this. But however, we're also often asked to find the foci, so let's go ahead and do that. Remember, the foci will be somewhere over here on the right and somewhere over here on the left, so we'll add and subtract c to the x-coordinate of the center. Well, since the center is 0, 0, we're going to have 0 plus 4.74, which will just be 4.74 comma 0. And the second focus will be 0 minus 4.47 or negative 4.47 comma 0. So one of them will be somewhere in here, and the other one will be somewhere over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more. So now we are going to have to uh, complete the square, so let's first group the x terms and the y terms together. Since the y squared term is positive, I'm going to go ahead and put that term first. We'll also go ahead and subtract 11 on both sides. Now in order to complete the square on the y part and the x part, we want the leading coefficient to be 1. So here we'll factor out 4, leave some room for the number. Now here we're going to factor out a negative 1, so it'll be minus positive x squared plus 2x. Okay, now to complete the square, we'll take half of negative 4 and then square it. Negative 2 squared would be 4. By putting a 4 here, we're actually adding 16, so we'll have to add 16 on the right. To complete the square here, we'll take half of 2, that's 1, and square it. So we'll add 1 here. But because of this minus sign here, we're actually subtracting 1, so we have to subtract 1 on the right. Let's go ahead and factor now. We have 4 times the quantity y minus 2 squared minus the quantity x plus 1 squared equals 4. To make the right side 1, we'll divide everything by 4 and simplify. So we're going to have the quantity y minus 2 squared divided by 1 minus the quantity x plus 1 squared divided by 4 equals 1. First thing we notice here is the y part of the equation is positive, so now we're going to have a vertical transverse axis, so the hyperbola will look something like this when we graph it. The center is located at negative 1, positive 2. This denominator here will be a squared, so a equals 1. This is b squared, so b equals 2. Let's go ahead and find c now c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Well, a squared is 1, and b squared is 4, so we have c squared equals 5. So c equals the square root of 5, which is approximately equal to 2.24. Okay, once again, let's go ahead and take this information to the next screen. So let's go ahead and start by plotting our center at negative 1, 2, be here. From here, since we know we have a vertical transverse axis, we're going to add and subtract a to the y-coordinate of the center to determine the two vertices. Since a is equal to 1, we'll go up one unit and down one unit from the center to the two vertices. So this will be negative 1, 3, and this will be negative 1, 1. Next, since we went up and down a units to determine the two vertices, now we'll go left and right b units to determine that rectangle to sketch in the asymptotes. Since b is equal to 2, we'll go two units to the right and two units to the left. And we're going to use these green points and these red points to form a rectangle, like so. And the lines passing through the diagonals will be the asymptotes. So, so from here we can make a nice graph of the hyperbola. It starts at this vertex and approaches the two asymptotes. And the same below. Now we should end by finding the coordinates of the two foci. Since the foci will be up here and down here, we will add and subtract c to the y-coordinate of the center. Let's go ahead and write that out. So we'll have negative 1, 4.24. And the second focus will be negative 1, comma, negative 0.24. Maybe somewhere in here for the second focus. 
Okay, that'll do it for this video.